Welcome to voice meter banana tutorial number one. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up voice meter banana to be used alongside programs like OBS Studio and TeamSpeak, for example. First, you Google voice meter banana. Once you've Googled voice meter banana, you would select either the official page, which is the first link you find, or the download.cnet.com option. I personally use the download.cnet.com option as it hasn't given me a problem um, and it works just fine. Now we have the voice meter banana software, as you can see here. You're gonna click the download now button. Once you've selected the download now button and open up the download, you should be seeing a group of files like this. You're gonna want to left click it twice and then you're gonna get a window that looks like this. So you would just do the same, left click it twice and it's gonna go ahead and set up voice meter for you. Before we get started with the voice meter banana tutorial, you're gonna wanna head down to the bottom right hand side of your computer screen and right click the speaker icon. After you right click the speaker icon, select playback devices. Your playback devices should look similar to this. It's not gonna be exactly the same. The important thing is making sure that voice meter input is your default device. So you simply right click voice meter input and set as default device. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is right click voice meter input again and select the properties option. After you selected the properties option, you're gonna to want to go to the advanced tab and make sure that for your default format, you have 16-bit 44.1K Hertz CD quality selected. Then you click okay. You would do this for all of your playback and recording devices. Next, we have the recording tab where you are going to want to make sure that voice meter output is your default device. Again, the way you do that is by just simply clicking voice meter output and setting as your default device with voice meter aux output, which is going to be used for Discord and TeamSpeak, for example, being the default communications device. Here is voice meter banana. For starters, you select the hardware input one option and find your mic. I have a headset mic and I am going to select the MME option. Down here we have a compressor and a noise gate that you can add to your microphone. I am currently using a noise gate as if I didn't have one, my mic would sound like this. Having a noise gate with a microphone removes background noise until you activate the noise gate. That's when you speak into the mic. It opens up and you can hear the background noise. But if you don't trigger the gate, then for the most part, your mic remains silent, which is what you want. It's less noise, so it's a better option. Here we have the fader gain. You can slide this up or down if you want to either raise the volume of your microphone or lower it. You're going to select the B1 and B2 buttons. We are not going to be using hardware input 2 and 3. So you simply click the mute button down here as we're not going to be needing this at all. Here we have the virtual inputs. We have two of them, the voice meter VAIO input and the voice meter AUX input. Voice meter VAIO is going to have your PC sounds and your mic, whereas voice meter aux is just going to have your microphone. So you're going to want to make sure that for VAIO, you select the A1 and B1 buttons, and for voice meter AUX, you select the A1 and B2 two buttons. Here we have the master section. Since we will not be using hardware input two and three, we will mute the physical channels under the master section that are tied to those inputs. So you would do this by simply clicking the mute button for A2 and A3. This is the hardware out section. You're going to press the A1 button and make sure 
that you have the option MME selected. As you might have noticed, the hardware input one and the A1 option both are MME. You want to make sure that you have the same audio drivers. Now that we have the proper hardware out option, you're going to want to head over to menu, click on that, and it would give you this set of options. You're going to want to click the system tray and show app on startup options so that voice meter launches when you turn your PC on. You want to make sure that voice meter banana is always running if you are to use it for your audio. Once you've checkmarked the options up top, you would go ahead and click on system settings. These are the system settings. You're going to want to make sure that under out A1 main device, you have MME selected. The status is on. The sample rate is at 44.1 K Hertz and that the buffer value is at 1024, which should match the buffering MME value of 1024 down below. You want to make sure that the buffer value is the same as having a different buffer value would cause audio distortion and crackle and pop and your mic would sound as if you were a robot which doesn't sound good at all. Down below we have the preferred main sample rate which you're going to want to make sure is set at 44.1 K Hertz. Lastly, we're going to set up key binds for the restart audio engine action. This is very important as sometimes in doing tests, I get crackle and distortion and very bad noises that are fixed if I restart the audio engine. To do that, I have to have voice meter opened and I have to go to menu and then click on the button, which if I'm in the middle of playing a Steam game or something like that is very annoying. So I'm going to teach you guys how to set up key binds for the restart audio engine action. The way you do so is you start off by making sure that the macro buttons option is selected. After you selected the macro buttons option, you're going to see a window that appears like this. We are just going to be using one of the squares. You right click the square and then you will see a screen that looks like this. Uh, for our button name, you're going to name it RAE. The button sub name is going to be Reset Audio Engine. And this is very important, very important. You're going to want to make sure that under request for button on and off, you have the same line of script, which is that is just a simple copy and paste for the button type. We're going to use push button and the keyboard shortcut could be anything you choose. You can, you have a variety of options by just clicking this drop down menu there. I went with control F12 as I don't use it for anything else. And then you're going to want to make sure the checkbox for exclusive key is filled and then you click OK. Once you set up the key bind for reset audio engine, if you ever hear crackle or pop or any type of distortion, you simply select the key bind that you set up. This is very important and using voice meter banana, this window and voice meter banana are to be open at all times. The cool thing about this window right here is that you can make it smaller. You would just simply drag the corner and uh, make it as small as you want and just minimize it as well as voice meter banana and you have the programs in the background and out of your way. Here we have OBS Studio. To start things off, you're going to want to select the file option and then head over to settings. You're going to see many tabs. You're going to click the audio tab that you see here and for desktop audio device, you're going to select voice meter input. For mic aux audio device, you're going to select voice meter aux output. Now that you set up your playback and recording devices in OBS, this mic channel will be picking up your microphone, which in my case is a headset mic. And the channel below that is going to be picking up the PC sounds. Here we have TeamSpeak. Select the tools option 
and then you will click options next select the playback tab as you see there for a playback device you're going to want to make sure it's set as voice meter input next select the capture tab and make sure that for capture device you have voice meter a u x output selected here we have discord here we have discord you're going to want to look at the bottom left hand side of your discord app and then next to your name click on the user settings cogwheel head on over to the voice tab and make sure for input device that you have voice meter a u x output selected and that for output device you have voice meter input selected for this last part of the tutorial i'm going to show you guys how to use a program called audacity which is very helpful for seeing how loud your microphone and pc sounds are this program here is called audacity it's free you can find it online just simply google audacity one of the first things is going to take you to the audacity website where you can download the program there for free once you have audacity open you're going to want to make sure that you have the windows direct sound option selected and for the microphone you're going to want to make sure that voice meter output is selected and for the playback speaker option you're going to want to make sure that you have voice meter input selected so when you are setting up your mic you would make sure that you click the click to start monitoring option and then you simply speak and this program is going to pick up how loud your mic is and you're going to want to make sure that your mic at the very most just talk normally you don't have to do anything you can just do a simple check and you're going to want to make sure that the blue line matches up with minus six this is going to be the audio level for your voice now that the mic sound level is set up you're going to want to make sure that your game and music is not louder than your actual mic and the way you would be able to tell is by simply selecting the windows wasabi option for the microphone you're going to have voice meter input as well as for the speaker you're going to have voice meter input the way this would work is you would open up your game and shoot a gun or make a very loud sound and you want to make sure that the blue check mark that you get from clicking to start monitoring gets to minus 12. Having minus 12 is important as this makes sure that your game is loud but is not louder than your mic. Lastly, you'd set up any music program such as Spotify or if you use YouTube in a very similar way that you did your game sounds except the difference would be that you want the blue check mark to be around the low 40s having the music sound level at around the 40s make sure that the music isn't too loud you can still hear footsteps in game if you need to and you could also hear your pc sounds loud and clear this concludes the voice meter banana tutorial i hope that it helped you if you have any questions or come across any problems, feel free to comment down below and I will do my best to try to help you if I know how to fix those problems. Thank you for watching.